welcome to nine on the positive side. I'm Courtney Courtright. Thanks so much for joining us throughout March. We're highlighting remarkable women throughout eastern North Carolina. Now to your sides, Elena Verdine met with one Moorhead City woman whose goal is to help people find their inner wonderful. I think back to those people that influenced you in your life. Just think for a minute. Maybe they saw something in you that you didn't see in yourself. A lifetime of service and inspiring the best in people, Wanda Bennett grew up in Carteret County and started giving back at a young age. Little Miss Blue Marlin, gosh, in 1969. And she quickly discovered her mission. I just had a memory of a, my third grade teacher. She said, Wanda is going to be a leader one day. But then if somebody speaks that, then you're like, well, I better get busy. You know, I better get busy. And busy is the perfect way to describe it. Wanda is a dedicated community volunteer, like serving on the Carteret Community College Foundation Board of Directors. Love that role. That's kind of like home for me. And recently, serving as chair of the Carteret County Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors, playing a vital role in major leadership transitions and reorganization, earning her the Extraordinary Chamber Leadership Award. When, when I was first asked to serve in, in the year that I knew would be a transition year for us, you know, I, I could have felt like it was impossible, but I just knew it was going to work out. Wanda's outreach is extensive, from teaching courses at Marine Corps Air Station Cherry Point to working as part of the Small Business Center Network in North Carolina, helping first-time business owners. See maybe how to start their business, how to develop a winning team, how to hire successfully. And now, Wanda owns her own business, Work on Wonderful Consulting. And she does exactly that, helping businesses across the East unlock their fullest potential. You may be good at turning wrenches, and that is what you do, but you're not good at bookkeeping. So you need to outsource that to someone who is good at bookkeeping. If we can wake up and just strive to be better and inspire others to be better along the way and, and know that we could all trip and fall, and we all have tripped and fall and fell, but we can pick ourselves up the next day and try again. But as for what it's all about for Wanda, making the community a better place and giving back to shape the future generations of leaders. Isn't that what we're supposed to do? I mean, isn't that what our parents taught us? While we might not be able to change in the big picture, at least we can make a difference in that little square in which we live in our communities. We can make a difference there. Because sometimes all you need is for someone to believe in you and help you be wonderful. Whatever you're passionate about, whatever your strength is, plug in and make a difference. In Moorhead City, Elena Verdine, nine on your side. And to see this story and the stories of our other Remarkable Women nominees, just find this page over on WNCT.com. You can see the inspirational stories of all of Eastern North Carolina's Remarkable Women for 2024. You just find it under the Features tab there at the top banner. People travel hundreds of miles to try a new spin on a classic Southern dessert. Shannon Smith finds out why it's just a small part of this small bakery success. And we're going to drizzle it in our homemade ice cream drizzle. Pound cake bites drenched in a drizzle, swirled slices coated with caramel and crunch. So good, so good. <laughs> Let's just say this is not your grandmother's pound cake. Not grandma's pound cake, sort of sweet, but definitely does have the flavor, but the texture is very airy, very soft. Shanana McMillan Shepherd actually does use her grandmother's recipes as the base for all the desserts at Notabelle's. In fact, her grandmother's passing inspired her to begin baking. It was just kind of something that did for a grief therapy um, because she would bake. Fast forward six years later, Shanata opened Nada Bell's desserts in Winston-Salem. She still keeps her grandmother close in a locket she wears while serving her pound cake to a new generation. It's just a way to um, revamp what a pound cake was to a younger audience. The cakes come in a variety of flavors from red velvet to strawberry. Some are baked in swirled round cake pans and served by the 
slice. But the pound cake bites begin in big sheet pans. When they come out of the oven, they're immediately basted in butter and then cut into bite-sized squares. And once you order, we dress them. So you get to see the magic. Customers can choose all kinds of dressings, everything from their scratch-made caramel right, to their specially created ice cream drizzle. Mmm, they're still a little warm. That's a cream cheese-based icing. Next comes the crunch. Strawberry birthday cake, lemon, key lime, Oreo, um, Pretty Pebble, almost any type of topping that you can think of. And see, this is what people love. It's like a little work of art. Yes, everyone loves the slice and bites. Wow, that is over the top goodness. But the bakery's bestseller began as a flop. Yes, so that is how it started um, because it was a failed sweet potato pound cake. I actually cut into it. It was so good and it kind of had the texture of a fudge brownie. That's when Nauta Bell's world famous sweet potato brownie was born. The brownie is actually a blondie because there's no chocolate. So now we just say brownie because it has the texture of fudge but tastes like sweet potato pie. The sweet potato brownie comes with caramel and pecans. World famous sweet potato brownie. Nada Bell sold 5,000 in the month of February. Shanata's business started with friends and family, but it blew up when a few famous foodies found her and posted about it on social media. And we went viral on TikTok. Now, new customers from across the country come in daily. I like the pound cake bites. I like the sweet potato brownie. I just try to try them all because she has so many varieties. Shanata says the success inspires her to keep trying new treats. And she's forever grateful for her grandmother and that original pound cake recipe. If I would have never went through the grief of losing her and using baking as therapy, I would never have a bakery. And that was Shannon Smith reporting. ECU baseball's Parker Bird is joining the Newburn Southpaws this summer. The newly created Old North State League team made the announcement on their social media pages earlier this week. Bird is the first person in NCAA Division I baseball history to play with a prosthetic leg. The Southpaws start their season before we know it. It'll be here on Saturday, May 25th. And you, if you have a story idea, you can send it on over to us. We want to hear about the positive things happening where you live. Just email newsdesk at WNCT.com. You can also reach out to me on social media. A surprise homecoming. Next, watch the special moment a father and daughter reunite. This was the moment Navy Petty Officer Alicia Pouch surprised her father, Principal David Jones, in St. Louis. It's been a while since they've seen each other. She was suspected back in April, but instead she arranged for this surprise visit now instead. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was going on. So, um, so, so, so a very, very good surprise. So I'm very, very excited about it. I think you thought I was a student. I did. Yeah. I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Pouch has been with the Navy for eight years, serving in several important stations, including Japan. Her latest station is in Jacksonville. Over in Texas, a celebration of service and gratitude for U.S. Marine Corps veteran Chad Calvert. He received a new car at All American Chevrolet of San Angelo. Calvert was honored by Military Warrior Supports Foundation's Transportation for Heroes program. The program helps combat wounded veterans and Gold Star spouses provide transitional support and other resources. It's unbelievable just to uh, just for the family just to be able to uh, to get get out underneath a lot of the uh, the burdens of uh, some bills and to get us back on our feet. Every one of these heroes has put their life on the line and made incredible sacrifices for our freedoms. And Calvert served in several deployments, including Iraq, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. He was injured from an improv 
improvised explosive device explosion and received a purple heart. A man from Pennsylvania turned 100 years old and he got to hear an extra special rendition of Happy Birthday. John Barnhart has always enjoyed watching and listening to high school bands. So a band from York County, Pennsylvania, surprised him by serenading him right on his own front lawn. His family, they were there too. He was a hero in the war, but he was a hero to all our family. Everybody always went to my Uncle John for everything and he was there. He supported the whole family and never complained. And speaking of celebrating birthdays in Arkansas, it's a birthday wish and a bucket list item for a woman who's 104 years old. Lauren Spencer has her story. Isn't it beautiful? Uh, I, I'm enjoying it. I'm just on cloud nine. I never wanted to come down. Evelyn Eels had one wish for her 104th birthday. A motorcycle ride around Bella Vista. How old are you turning today? 25. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Thank you, thank you. I've wanted to go on this ride for 104 years. She hasn't been on a motorcycle in more than 75 years. And she says she wasn't too sure why she chose to do this. I have no idea. I guess I'm just a daredevil. <laughs> I wasn't scared for her. I just thought, you're really going to do this? Teresa Krupper is Evelyn's great niece. She just has basically become my second mom. She's an amazing lady. She has a Facebook. She does Sudoku, crossword puzzles. She reads avidly. Just very active. A 10 minute loop around Bella Vista with the whole community cheering her on. Loved it. Waved at everybody along the way. Everybody's parked aside the ride to watch me go by. And I, hey. And for her 105th birthday, she says she expects a similar celebration. Anytime the fellows are ready, I am. <laughs> In Bella Vista, covering news where you live, Lauren Spencer, 5 News. This is way more than your typical spot to get coffee. When we come back on 9 on the positive side, how a business in Bayboro is connecting people in more ways than one. And a little later. At that point, it was like, we're going to be the biggest, best pimento cheese company on the planet. It takes money to make money, if you've ever heard that saying, how a man owes his livelihood to a game show. And this week's Connecting the Community, we are headed to Pamlico County, Chaos Coffee in Bayboro, to be exact. As digital reporter Shannon Baker tells us, the owners are honoring their son and keeping his memory alive while also serving their community. So chaos is a word that most people associate with the world and how chaotic things can get, which is the funny pun to it. But really where it came from was our son who passed away from childhood cancer. His middle name was Mattis after General James Mattis, whose call sign while he was active duty still um, and a pilot was chaos. And so we did a tribute to our son through his middle name, and the pun of chaos and coffee. It just bl blended perfectly together. So we started Chaos Coffee in March of 2020 and it was about a week um, before COVID hit. And we decided to purchase a company, change the name, see where it went. And then all of a sudden, um, the world kind of came to an end for a short time, but people still drink coffee and more people wanted to drink different types of coffee and we're experimenting with cold brews and French press and getting into the more intricate coffee world. So you can already smell it. Can you smell that already? We offer an artisan experience with coffees from all over the world. Right now in my unit we have 12 different coffee beans from 12 different countries, um, mainly South America. We just love diving into the different flavor profiles from all these countries and each one is so unique and different in every way and it's really awesome to just be able to give back to the community through coffee. We've all heard 
Florida takes money to make money. Some entrepreneurs get help from investors or a business loan. Well, a Charlotte man owes his livelihood to a game show. As John Lee explains, without a memorable TV experience, his dream may have been in jeopardy. About a ton of finished product a day. What is a Charlotte success story? What is a dream come true? Entrepreneurs rarely have all the answers. Am I getting grilled here? Is this an audit? <laughs> What is known as Southern Caviar, John Morgan owns Queen Charlotte's Pimento Cheese Royale. We've managed to find a better way to do just about everything else, but we're still scooping this stuff. He packs his product with friends and family, like his dad. Also, John's five-year-old boy, Henry, who is always cheesing. I'm never prouder. Even the equipment feels like family. This is Emily, by the way. This is our, our, our packaging robot. She is the real, the real MVP of our team. Along the way, most entrepreneurs fight through times when they haven't got a clue. One 85-ounce scoop full at a time. It ain't easy being cheesy, but John learned long ago that in the face of adversity, sometimes you must respond in the form of a question. This is Jeopardy! Introducing today's contestants, an elementary school art teacher from Charlotte, North Carolina, John Morgan. Crazy as it sounds, that's how it started. The Jeopardy! episode aired in January of 2013. None dare accuse me of wearing one of these headdresses. John. What's a tiara? Yes. At his audition, John was asked about what he'd do with his winnings. At that point, it was like, we're going to be the biggest, best pimento cheese company on the planet. John. What's Three Mile Island? You got it. Let's do theme songs for four, please. He had the most cash going into Final Jeopardy, but whiffed on the last question. The 2000 bucks he earned for finishing second went a long way. The iota of a germ of a scintilla of a start. But most of all, it was it was something cool to tell people. Still is. It was the most fun thing I've ever done in my life. The game show cash flow went towards this mixer to start his business. Ten years later, John spread sells nationwide as far away as Alaska in a handful of flavors. Blue cheese, pimento cheese. Um, that's 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 my unique contribution to humankind. One day he'll hand the business over to Henry and one-year-old Felix, who already has a lab coat. He loves his hair net. Big fan. What is the future? Where'd you go? <laughs> sure, it, you know, Jeopardy was 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 an amazing genesis of our of our story, but it was it was just the start. Everything else has been very much about just hard work. All the what's on Jeopardy paid off, so John never wonders, what if? What does handcrafted mean? I show him that. In Charlotte, John Lee, Queen City News. Thanks so much for joining us for Nine on the Positive Side this weekend. One last stop of Botanical Garden in New York. Let's check it out. Have a great weekend, everyone. We'll see you next time.